Thank you for that, Liz. We as students are forced to deal with issues that sometimes our parents didn't have to. But even though we face difficulties along the way, we are all here today. Please welcome Jordan Lewis to the stage and we'll talk about the changes she went through to get her here today. Good morning, fellow graduates, families, faculty, and staff. I would first like to thank all of you for coming out this morning. Today I will be discussing my experiences in City Hat and how I've changed over the four years. Four years ago, my mom and this my mom and dad decided I was going to City Hat. They never even asked me if I wanted to go. So when I found this out, I said, Great. I'm going to attend this bougie school that has no sports teams. You have to go to you have to dress up, two hour classes, and they're gonna go to school in the summer. Thanks a lot. <laughs> on the first day when I walked in the cafeteria, I was amazed at so many familiar faces that I saw. I thought City Hive was going to be fun. The classes were okay and I created a lot of friendships. These early friendships grew into a close group of statements that I hoped I could call my friends in the future. We laughed together, ate together, made days together. During my time at City Hat, I never understood the work first grade. How are you going to grade me on my attitude, the way I dress, or the things I say? I hated it. It made no sense to me. My friends and I felt the same way, and administrators felt that we weren't the best of crowds. We were loud in the lunchroom and always had something to say. It felt like we were being judged before people even got a chance to know us, especially me, because I didn't like having the title of being lazy. This caused me to act out, saying what I wanted to say, getting kicked out of class, and being sent to the office. I was acting out in school. I lost respect for myself as a person. Graduating was not in my future. It really didn't matter to me. I was enjoying myself in the lifestyle that I built. Then something shook me up and made me rethink my values. I learned that my mom had cancer. I knew I had to change my ways and make her dream come true by seeing me walk across the stage. As I was starting to change and grow up, my teachers and administrators said, Jordan, you could do better, and you need to start thinking about your future after City, after city Hat. I felt like her to tell me I can do better if I'm already trying. I'm not focused on my future with my mom in and out of the hospital. I just want to get left alone. <coughs> with them trying to encourage me, it just pushed me away. I was sick of hearing from Mr. Lincoln, Miss Lewis, come here, or them from Miss Lewis. <laughs> Then from Ms. Johnson saying, Jordan, do you want to do this? People on the street, Jordan, do you want to do this? Jordan, do you want to do that? And from, then from Ms. Welch saying, Jordan, you can't say stuff like that. At this point, I was done. The worst day of my life came eight days before Christmas it was in my junior year. I found out my mom was dying. breathing for her and she was about to leave. We brought them on home using the hospice group because she didn't want to die in the hospital. I was happy she was home and made sure that she knew that I loved her. Her senses were slowly going away. The last thing she had was her hair. to give my mom her medicine. We walked in her room and found her bed. My only motivation was born. She was more than just my mom. She is my best friend. She was the only one who really understood me. When she left, it felt like I was a ticking time bomb. It made me feel like it was me against the world. It was hard passing my family grieved in different ways. I grieved with anger when some chose to grieve by isolating me. Family members that I thought would be supportive just slowly drifted away. This made me very perplexed and very furious. I thought about work as an outlet, but instead I chose school. I couldn't let all this negativity get to me or affect me. I was determined to prove to everyone who abandoned me, who thought I was going on the wrong path, that I can and will succeed, whether you were there or not, because I really don't need you. I 
campaigns from people in school or at home affect where I wanted to go. I wasn't going to let what people said or did get to me. All I knew was that I had to achieve my mom's dream. I'm doing bigger and better things now. I'm working on my anger. My relationships with my teachers and administrators is better. But most importantly, I'm walking across the stage in my graduation. be a freshman at California University with a major of social work. City Had has taught me one thing, is to not let your obstacles stop you from reaching where you want to go. City Had made me the strong, mature person I am today. Thank you, City Had. And Mom, I just want to say I appreciate your love and all your sacrifices that you made for me. Without you, I won't be the young lady standing here giving this speech today. I thank you and I love you. And I also want to say, Dad, that I thank you for always being there because I know I'm not the best, but you always look better than me.